this is a great demonstration for showing that if something's moving in a circle and you remove the centripetal force, it'll move in a straight line. But if you're teaching circular motion, I've got another demonstration that's worth doing first. This is a really simple way to introduce some basic ideas about circular motion. The ball moves in a horizontal plane, which makes it easier to understand the forces involved than with, say, something moving in a vertical circle because we can ignore gravity. When I do this with my students, I place an object about there and I ask them to tell me when I should lift the hoop so the ball knocks it down. Right, so as a physics teacher, I knew when to lift the hoop because I knew the ball would go off at a tangent. But that's not obvious to everyone, and this demonstration can really help to clear up misconceptions about things flying off radially when you remove the centripetal force. The ball goes from moving in a circle to moving in a straight line, and we know from Newton's first law that if something is moving in a straight line at a steady speed, the resultant force on it is zero. So what's going on when it's in the hoop? Well, the hoop exerts a contact force on the ball at right angles to its surface, and that force changes the velocity of the ball. The force is always directed towards the centre of the hoop, the centre of the circle. Take away that force and the ball obeys Newton's first law and carries on moving in a straight line. This is true of all objects moving at a steady speed in a circle. The instantaneous velocity is always at a tangent to the circle and the force keeping it moving in a circle is at 90 degrees to this that is, towards the centre of the circle. We describe the resultant force that makes something move in a circle as a centripetal force, and it's important to emphasise to students that this word simply tells us the direction of the force and nothing more. The force may come from a contact force, as in this example, or friction, or gravity, or tension in a string, or any combination of these forces, so it's really important to look carefully at any particular situation to identify the origin of the centripetal force. This is really just a more exciting version of the demonstration with the hoop and the ball. And it's not as dangerous as it looks. If you're going to do this in class, wear some goggles and a lab coat to protect your clothes from any stray sparks. Stand your students a couple of metres back in a plane that's parallel to the plane of rotation of the sparkler. You simply jam the sparkler into your drill, making sure it's secured tightly, bend it at 90 degrees, ignite it and off you go.